Good morning everybody and a very warm welcome to our time of worship here in the Butts Church. It's great that we can come together, we can worship God in different ways and we can bring our praises to Him. So let's do that now as we sing together, Blessed Be Your Name. Now, one of the other things we, of course, 
like to do each month is our memory <coughs> verse challenge. So, uh, first thing, uh, we need to remember what it was we were looking at last month. Can anybody tell me what was our subject we thought about? Let's start with the big picture and then we can work out what the verse was. So what were we thinking about? It was only a month ago. Uh, what was it we were thinking about? Jay, you go it was the transfiguration we were thinking about. So we have a verse that was to do with transfiguration. How many people think they can tell me all or some of it? Or some or all of it, which would probably be you or should do it. So we've got Jane, have we got anyone else? And Geraldine, okay. So if we do the first half of the back and then I'll come to the forward and we'll see how we do. So turn this on. Uh, there you go. There he was transfigured before them. And his face shone like the sun. Okay. Okay. And his clothes were as bright as the light, Matthew 17, verse 2. Okay, do we think they got it right? Yes. You don't know, do you? You're just saying yes. Okay, let's have a look. I think they did very well indeed. It was indeed there, he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light, Matthew 17, verse 2. If you remember, we looked at, it's interesting, the different Gospels all describe it different ways. Some said that his clothes were like lightning, some said they were bleak, as if brighter than they could ever be bleached, and all those sorts of things. So, uh, we only had two people. I think the month before last, we did very well. We've gone backwards, so we need to make sure we're having a good push for next month. So hopefully some of you have seen this already. This month's memory verse, the law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. Psalm 19 verse 7. And again, it's a good one for being able to break up and just do bits at a time, which either helps us learn it, the whole thing, or we can just remember part of it. So we could do, the law of the Lord is perfect. That would be a good start to remember that. Then we could add on refreshing the soul. Then if we manage that, we can add on the statutes of the Lord are trustworthy. If we manage that, we can make, uh, add making wise the simple. So can we say that all together, please? The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. Psalm 19, verse 7. Brilliant. So it would be great if there were lots of people that were able to... Uh, tell us what that memory verse was uh, next time. Uh, there we go. I uh, hope some of you picked up your colouring sheet. Um, and so you can take that away. We can colour it in, make it nice and bright, put it somewhere to help us uh, remember it. So it would be great if we had a few more next time. One of the other things we, of course, love to do is look at the pictures of what people did uh, last month as well, so we have a little look at our photo gallery. Remember, if you get your picture up on the screen, um, and I'll be honest, as long as you send it to me, and uh, don't forget, it will be on the screen, uh, you get a prize. So do come and see me if your pictures are on the screen. So we start with this one, which I believe is a combination of Ruth's and Jane's put together, one of one, one of the other. So well done to Ruth and Jane. Uh, we've got some other models in to help demonstrate this one as well. There we go. That's uh, that there. It's very good. Of course, we decided we need to go a bit more glamorous with our models after seeing Danny and Zach. Sorry, Danny. Uh, so we've got something a bit more glamorous to as well, which is great. Uh, we then got, uh, so that was part that was one of the crafts we did. The other one, uh, we made the kind of lamp things where uh, Jesus' clothes shone. Uh, so here's Matthew with his. Um, there's some people that were very excited with theirs as well, <laughs> and excited by the tea, I assume, because uh, we've got a nice picture of that as well, which is good. Um, and then, there you go, we get a bit of an idea of what it was like uh, when it was dark, it was lit up. That is Sue's picture, and then uh, we've got Anne's as well. So thank you for sending in your photos, do keep them coming, uh, it is great to have them. We don't always get quite as many as we like, and sometimes we don't get pictures of all the craft. So it's really helpful if you can take them and send them in. Now, we've just been looking at a lamp, and now we're going to sing about one. How's that for a second? Let's sing together, your word is a lamp to my feet.
drink. It's a nice day for a walk, but it might come on to rain, so take a coat. Okay, see you later. Make sure you stick to the public footpath and don't go wandering into the farmer's land. And try not to get into trouble. We'll be fine, Mum, don't worry. But I do. I know what you boys are like. Let's go this way. I'm not sure we've been on that path before. Good idea. Why are parents always telling us what to do? Don't do this and don't do that. I know. I can't wait till I'm older when you can do whatever you like. But there's still rules, I'm afraid. Wouldn't it be great to live in a world where there were no rules at all? Yeah, imagine. We wouldn't have to go to school. If we wanted to, we could stay in bed all day. Or just play computer games. We could drive a car at any age. We'd go anywhere and watch any films we like. Rules are stupid. What about that rule? Stay on footpath. It doesn't even say why. Just some silly rule. Come on, Sam, let's go up here. Okay, this is exciting. Ooh, look, there's another sign. No entry. Well, there's no one around. Let's just ignore it. Good idea. Hey, look at all of those conga trees over there. Wow, yes. Trouble is, there's a fence here. And another sign. Keep out. Danger. Beware. And some other words you can't read. Never mind, let's climb over. Yes, easy for us. Great, I'm over. Me too. There are huge conkers here. Yes, and here too. Amazing! Look at this one. That's a champion. Did, did you hear that? Yes. What was it, do you think? Um. Nothing much. Oh look, here's a really huge conker. I don't like the sound of that. I think we should probably go. Yeah, maybe. Oh no. Help, it's a bomb! So it is, come on, let's get out of here. Quick, over the fence! It's gonna kill us! Grab my hand! It's okay, I'm over. He can't get to us now. I think that's what the sign said. You know the words you couldn't read. Oh, uh, yeah. Come on, let's go back home. Okay. I dropped all my compass. Me too. Maybe we were wrong. What do you mean? Maybe we do need rules after all to keep us safe. Yeah, you're probably right. Sounds like a storm's coming. And it's starting to rain. We didn't bring our coats. Oh, Mum's gonna kill us. Come on, let's run. Thank you to our special voice, uh, special guest voice actors. I get the words out, actually.
Uh, so we are thinking about the Ten Commandments today, but first, I want, us, uh, want to take us back to our first fourth Sunday of the year, way back in January. Now, we did so well at remembering what we did last month. I have so much confidence to ask you this. Can anybody remember what was it we did for the fourth Sunday way back in January? Can anybody remember? I'll give you a, a possible clue. This is my first picture. Now, can anybody remember or might be able to work out? There's one key ingredient that's missing at the moment from that picture. Anyone think they might make it? Yes, try and work out who that might be and what we might have looked at. Do we need an extra clue? I think we do. Uh, what if I add that in as well? Oh, that makes all the difference, doesn't it? So we were thinking about Moses and the burning bush. And if you remember, what we thought way back at the beginning of the year was how Moses had this encounter with God who spoke to him from a burning bush. And there were things that he wanted Moses to do. The Israelites had been living in slavery and having a real hard time, and they had been crying out to God, and God had heard their cries, and he had promised to save them out of their slavery. And he told Moses exactly what he wanted him to do, and how he would help him. And uh, we know that various things happened, but God said, I will be with you, and this will be a sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. And so that was the promise that God had made, and he gave Moses all sorts of signs to help him. Eventually, because Moses kept complaining, he said, well, Aaron can help you as well. And we know there were lots of things that happened. They went back and the plagues, but eventually they did leave Egypt. There was the Passover where they were able to leave, and amazing things happened. God led them through things like the Red Sea, where the sea just parted and they were able to go through. He led them across the desert, and eventually, they did return to the mountain. Uh, when Moses went up the first time, it was called Horeb. This time, it was called Sinai. We think it's the same mountain, the same kind of range of mountains. And God met again with, uh, with Moses. And so we know the people were kind of at the base of the mountain. Moses went up. God descended in a cloud. And he started talking with Moses. And he gave him. Uh, the Ten Commandments. Uh, so we know they were written on uh, tablets of stone. We think probably it was originally kind of ten words, just single words written out. I've done it uh, kind of in Hebrew instead uh, for us. And of course there was more than just these, but these, if you like, are the headline uh, things. These are the things that people noticed. So I thought, first of all, it would be good to look through what the Ten Commandments actually are. So first of all, uh, God said, I am the Lord your God. I brought you out of the land of Egypt where you were slaves. You must, have, uh, you must not have any other gods except me. God wanted to start by reminding the people exactly what he had done for them. He had promised that he was going to bring them out of slavery and out of Egypt. He had he'd done, led them miraculously through the Red Sea. He had led them across the desert to this land. He says, it is me that has done this for you. I am the one true God, and so you should have no other gods. Now, of course, this was different to people that were around at the time. They had lots of other gods. They used to uh, make things and then worship them. And so God goes further on the second commandment to say, you must not make for yourself any idols. These kind of things that people would bow down and worship. Don't make something that looks like anything in the sky above, or the earth below, or in the water below the land. You must not worship or serve any idol. This is because I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. A person may sin against me and hate me. I will punish his children, even his grandchildren and great grandchildren. But I will be very kind to thousands who love me and obey my commands. 
So God said, you're not to make any kind of morals, you're not supposed to bow down and worship anything else. But then, uh, commandment number three, you must not use the name of your Lord, your God, thoughtlessly. The Lord will punish anyone who is guilty and misuses his name. Names were very important back in those times. It wasn't just what you called. Your name kind of summed up exactly who you were. And so if you were misusing someone's name, it's like you're making fun of who they are. And so people weren't to do that. Um, I think today we see it quite often and we see how much. Of course, in our household, OMG stands for Oh My Goodness, of course. But in lots of places, it stands for other things. And that's what it means, using the Lord's name thoughtlessly. Or using it almost in replacement of a swear word, as people do. So that was something people wanted to do. Uh, the next commandment, remember to keep the Sabbath day as a holy day. I was saying you should have a day that is dedicated to me. So we often think about that as a Sunday. Different people, different places, sometimes have it other days. It's a day that is dedicated to rest. We remember that when God created the world, he worked for six days, and on the seventh day he rested. So it's a day for us to rest, but to rest in him and think about him. That word holy really means set apart. It is a day we set apart for God and for him. Next commandment, honour your father and your mother. And it's the only commandment that comes with a promise. Then you will live a long time in the land the Lord your God is, uh, the Lord your God is going to give you this land. That, of course, is really important. Our mothers and fathers do so much for us. They look after us. They provide for us. It's important that we show them the respect and honour that they deserve. And of course, in a way, our families are a picture of God. We call God Father, we're able to do that. Jesus tells us we can call him Father. And in the same way we should honour him who provides for us, we show it to our parents as well. Our next commandment, hopefully some of these are fairly self-explanatory, you must not murder anyone. I thought long and hard about what picture to have for this. Um, I went for this one in the end. Um, so you must not murder anyone. Everybody, we are told, is made in God's image. Everybody has important value because they reflect something of God. And so we shouldn't kill anyone because each life is precious. Some of you will know there's a vote happening next week to do with allowing people to kill themselves. And that's one of the reasons why we think that's so dangerous and, and why we think it's wrong, because it is for God to make those decisions, not for us. You must not be guilty of adultery. When you join together as husband and wife, something that's often said in marriage services is what God has put together, let no one separate. And so we still value that as really important. So it says you should be, uh, you should always make sure you are faithful to the person you are joined together by God. You should be uh, making sure you are living as you should with your husband or wife. Next commandment was you must not steal. Thankfully, we know uh, if some of us are, uh, it's been bad enough that we've been. Uh, not guilty of that's not the word I'm looking for. If we have experienced having stuff stolen from us, we know how horrible it is and what an impact actually it can have on our lives. I know that there are people here who have been broken into it. Just the idea of people being around, it is a horrible, horrible, wicked thing. It's not just that they've taken things, it has other implications as well. So we're not to do that. Uh, next one, you must not tell lies about your neighbour in court. I think we can just basically say, you shouldn't tell lies. It doesn't matter if it's in court or not. We should make sure we are telling the truth. And the only person, well, one of the people we're told that does lie in the Bible is called the father of lies, and that's <coughs> the devil. And if he's the person, the kind of, the, the poster boy, if you like, for lying, we certainly don't 
want to reflect him. And then the last one, you must not want to take your neighbor's house, you must not want to take his wife or his men or women slaves, you must not want his ox or his donkey. Now some of these we might feel aren't quite so relevant for all of us um, today. Uh, you might not find it's too tempting to try and steal your neighbor's donkey because they might not have one. But I know some of us here do know people with donkeys and so it's quite possible that we might God provides us with all good things, and so we should be content with what he gives us. We certainly shouldn't become jealous and want to uh, kind of take things from others, which might, of course, lead to trying to steal them or take them from thoughts. So those were the Ten Commandments. God gave lots of other things as well. It's called the law in the Old Testament, but this is a kind of good summary if we want to think. If we're thinking about the law, lots of people might go to the Ten Commandments first. And you might have noticed that we can kind of break them up into two different sections. The first section is all about what our attitude should be to God, how we should love Him. So we only have one God, we don't worship any others, we don't have idols, we make sure we keep the Sabbath holy, we don't misuse his name. So that is the first kind of half of the commandments. And then the second half, we think about how we should love one another, how we should love everybody else. So the Ten Commandments about how we should uh, be around God, how we should show our love for him. But then the second half, how we should love everybody else. And of course, really, the reason we should love everyone else in those ways is because of the love of God. So they all come together. Jesus was once asked, what is the most important commandment? And he showed basically those two different sections. He said the most important one answer to Jesus is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Jesus says these are so important. Now it's an interesting thing to think about what happens if you talk to people about the Ten Commandments today. I think some people would have a kind of bit of a reaction against them and often we get the kind of things, oh it's just a load of rules for us to obey. Uh, it's kind of God the cosmic killjoy is how sometimes it's said. Either that, oh no, that's fine, I don't kill anyone. I keep all the Ten Commandments. Those are the kind of attitudes we have. But people might be a bit negative towards them. But I think there are some important things that we need to remember when we think about the Ten Commandments. First of all, we need to think about God's calendar. I think this is a really key point. And God makes it clear, I don't know if you notice this, right at the very start of the commandments. What does he do? He reminds them that he saved them out of slavery and now he gives them the Ten Commandments. He didn't say, you're in slavery, here's a load of rules, if you keep these rules, then I will save you out of slavery. That's not what God did. He saved them first, and then he gave them the Ten Commandments. It's like a response to what he had done in saving them. So that's the first thing. It was not something before he saved them. He saved them first, and then he gave them the Ten Commandments. The next thing to say is actually the Ten Commandments are really good. If we're honest, and we, we kind of ask people, do you think you should go about murdering someone? Most people will probably say no. If you ask them, uh, is it really good to be broken into? Most people will say no. But actually, all of the commandments are really good. And that's where our memory verse comes in. It reminds us, the law of the Lord is perfect. It's a wonderful thing. It refreshes us when we keep it. Our life is good if we manage to keep those Ten Commandments. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy. These things are good for us, and they make us wise. It is a really good 
thing. The problem is, as I said, if we manage to keep all these things, our lives will almost be perfect. That's kind of what we see. But the thing is, we fail to keep them so often. Yeah, we might be good at not murdering people as we go about in the day to day, but there are other things we're not so good at. We don't always love God as much as we should. We don't love him always in the way that we should. And sometimes, we might not think about creating something to worship, but we act as if we do. We maybe uh, take other things and we start treating them as if they were the most important things in our lives. But God knew that was going to happen. If we continue reading through the Bible, uh, when Moses eventually comes down the mountain, uh, already the people have made a golden calf and they start worshipping it. Already, before Moses, between the time that Moses is given the law and gets down, he hasn't even had a chance to tell them, and they've already broken the commandments. But that is part of the purpose of having them. The law, the commandments, show us that we are guilty of sin. None of us can keep all of that law, all of those commandments, as we were born. We always do things wrong, but they're there to tell us and show us what is right and wrong. Paul, later in the Bible, when he was writing to the church in Rome, said, I would not have known what sin was if it had not been for the law. So we need the commandments to know what is right or wrong. But if we break it, it should drive us to think we need more than this. We can't keep this. We need something or someone to come and help us. And of course, we know that that person is Jesus. That is why he came. That is why there was the Ten Commandments and all the law. It helps us realise we need someone to come and help us with our sin problem. And that is exactly what Jesus came to do. He died on the cross so we could be forgiven of all of our sins. All the times when we break any of those commandments or anything else in them, Jesus took it upon himself so we, that issue would be dealt with for us. So does that mean that now we can just forget about the Ten Commandments? So it doesn't matter, we can do what we like because we're forgiven by Jesus. No, I think Jesus constantly shows the importance of it. We've already said, we've seen him say, these are the two most important commandments, love God, love your neighbour. He continued to preach it throughout his ministry. And he said, don't think that I've come to abolish the law of the prophets, I have come not to, I've not come to abolish them, but to fulfil them. He did that, of course, on the cross. And in the book of Hebrews, when talking about Jesus, and his sacrifice, we're told this. The Holy Spirit also testifies to us about this. First he says, this is the covenant I will make with them. After that time, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. This is a quote from Jeremiah in the Old Testament. Jeremiah actually said it the other way around, writing on our hearts and putting it in our minds. But this is what happens when Jesus comes. The law, including those Ten Commandments, are written upon our hearts. Now if you're feeling very romantic, you might say to your partner, oh, your name is forever on my heart. Does that mean that it's there and you can forget about them and never worry about them anymore? No, of course not. It means it's something that is there. We continue to live remembering that trying to do it. So if God's laws are written on our hearts, they should still be important to us. Some people say, Ten Commandments, Old Testament, it doesn't matter anymore. Well, no, they're written on our hearts through Jesus. They are so important. We should remember them each day and think about what we do. But it goes on further. Uh, then he adds, their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. See, Jesus helps us keep the law as best we can, better than we would ever do without him. But we do still make mistakes. We still end up breaking some of those things, particularly not loving God 
as much as we should do. But because of Jesus coming and dying for us, we are forgiven of the times that we don't do. Isn't that amazing? Because of Jesus, we are forgiven of the times that we break them. But because of him, they're written on our hearts, and that helps us keep them much better than we ever would do before. But when we fail to keep them, we are forgiven of them because Jesus died for us. It is a great cycle. God gave Jesus and it makes all the difference to us. And if we love Jesus, we do try and keep those commands. As Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commands. So do continue to think about the Ten Commandments. Think about the importance of them and that what they should mean to us, written on our hearts by Jesus through the gift of the Holy Spirit. So we give thanks to the Lord. Dear Lord, we do want to say thank you so much that you gave us the Ten Commandments. You gave us all of your law and we thank you for how good it is. How it reflects yourself and so is of course a good way to live. It is the way to live a perfect life. But Lord, we know we can't do that on our own strength. We know that we fail to do it. So we thank you that it pointed to the need of someone to help us. And that person was your son who you sent for us, Jesus Christ. We thank you that through him, that law is now written on our hearts and we can keep it in a way we never could do before. But when we do not do as we should, we are forgiven because of his sacrifice. So we do thank you and praise you so much for your provision for us, all you give us, all you continually do for us, and the good life you have planned for us. Thank you that you want us to have that good, perfect life, and how we look forward to when we live that with you in eternity. So we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. And let's say together the words of the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, <coughs> hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In a few moments we're going to break up and do some different things, but before we do that we are going to sing and give our praise to God, thanking Him for His amazing grace. Let's sing this, His Amazing Grace.
So in a moment we're going to break up and do uh, different things. This time next month we are back in here, but not for the fourth Sunday. Uh, it is our a family Christmas service because it will only be a few days before Christmas. So do please uh, come along. It's an uh, all right service. Uh, hopefully you can have some fun. I uh, do think if there's anyone you can invite uh, to that as well. If you would like to spend a bit more time thinking about uh, the Ten Commandments and what they mean to us and what they mean to others, uh, oh, excuse me. <coughs> there are some uh, discussion questions on the table at the back over there, uh, so you can have a discussion of some of those things or anything else that comes to mind, preferably about the Ten Commandments rather than just random something else you're thinking of. Uh, do go and you can do that and uh, discuss that and pray. Uh, if you would like to do uh, a more crafty type thing, we have two options available uh, for you today. Um, I'm doing this kind of real one which goes through and reminds us of what each of the Ten Commandments are so we can have that and remind ourselves regularly of what they are. Or if you go and see Jill, uh, she's doing one of these kind of zigzag um, pictures where if you look at it one way it tells us one thing, if you look at it the other way it tells you something else. So if you want to do that graph, uh, go and see Jill. If you want to do the, the Ten Commandments wheel, uh, do come and see me. Uh, discussion at the back, then do please come over to the hall for about 10.30 for some refreshments, and then for those that are involved, a rehearsal will be here at quarter to 11, so don't get ticked away. At quarter to 12, there's a rehearsal in here. Don't get too excited by tea and coffee that you forget to come back over if you're involved. So hopefully uh, we will see some of you 